All right, it's been a while since I've made some videos, but I want to take this time to address some things that people have requested from the class. One thing that people have wanted to see is maybe some more advanced projects that aren't just a simple box house that we came up with, and that's fine. So in this video, I'm going to address a couple different things. I'm going to show you how to bring in CAD specifically, because before we just brought in sketches, and I didn't explicitly show you how to bring in CAD. So I'll show you that. And I'll also show you how I set up this model with my layering system and all that kind of stuff, similar to what we did with the other project. But this one's a little more advanced, still pretty simple building, but you'll see everything on a larger scale. And then I'll also make this model available to you so you can try rendering it yourself and you can put your own materials on it and all that kind of stuff, set up your own lighting. So first, let's start with the CAD. You can see that I have a floor plan here. If I go to the front view by hitting F, and if I turn off all my objects by hitting Shift O, you'll see just my splines left, which CAD is a spline. So you see I have the front elevation there. If I go to the right view, you'll see I have the right elevation here. So if you look here again, you can see that I put that front elevation way back here so that when I'm in the front view and I turn on my objects, they're always in front. Okay, so they're in front of those lines when I draw. Now I can just snap to that cat, of course. As an example, let's show you, if I go into lines, create line, make sure snap is on, right here, snaps toggle, and you want to be in two and a half snap. Okay, that means it's going to be drawing on the zero plane, not on the same plane that that cat is on. So I'll show you what that means. You can snap right to it. And that actually doesn't look like it's working. It's snapping back all the way. Oh. Well, because I have this positioned oddly in space, it's actually still behind, which isn't ideal. If, if I was doing this correctly, I'd move this all back here so that when I draw this it will show up in front of my lines not in back. So there's an easy way to fix that. I can just do let's delete that. Go to my CAD front elevation if I have such a layer. Okay. It's that one. And let's move it back in the Y axis way back like that. So it kind of depends on where you place everything in space. I could have placed it better. Then you freeze it again so you're not selecting it anymore. Now when I draw this, it'll show up in front and I'll be able to see my line just fine. So drawing all this stuff is real easy when you have nice clean CAD in here. An important thing to remember when bringing in CAD is to just delete everything you don't need because CAD can bog down your scene quite a bit. So you just delete everything that's not essential. Okay, now I have this line here sitting out here in this plane, and I will have to move it up using the top view to the correct place, and then you can just extrude it as stairs or whatever it is you're trying to do. So that's how this whole entire model is created. Usually start by referencing the elevation and making these big shapes. This one, for example, is just a big chunk of wall. And then you go to top view and place it in the correct plane there. And eventually you get an entire building. Nice thing about this building is these windows are all the same and therefore they're all instanced. You can tell by that. If you hit make unique, they won't be instanced anymore. But since they are instanced right now, they're all the same window. I can just edit one and it will edit all of them. As I go around the corner, I usually turn them into copies but these are all instanced to each other on this side as well. So you can see how that cat is working. It's very handy. There's a couple things to remember with your snap in here. If you right click on snap, make sure that vertex is selected. And usually that's the only one I select when I'm trying to draw the cat because every corner, every vertice on your cat, you can snap right to, which is exactly what you need. You need to make sure that snap to frozen objects on us so that when we freeze that cat, you can still snap to it. 
Of course, enable access constraints as I've showed you in other videos. I always use that. So that's the way to start a really clean file when an architect sends you CAD to go off of. Now you can see another important thing that I that I did here is my file organization where I just divide up if you look in wireframe I divide up everything to a right elevation and a front elevation and I made sure to set that up on layers I'm not perfect here this should really all be on like a site layer down here so I could do make all your sites on zero And that keeps it organized for you. When you get a lot of high poly scenes, then it'll be essential because then you can turn things on and off as necessary to keep your uh, file running smoothly because they can get bogged down pretty bad. Make sure that's on site. I would set up my own layer for cars, people, all those kind of things. Anything that can be high poly that you might want to turn off. But you can see now when you go to the right view to work on this elevation and you start tracing your CAD, you can turn off walls front so that it doesn't get in your way. And you just have really nice clean lines to draw to. So you can see it's really kind of simple to create a file like this, especially since there's so much repetition here. But that's how you do it with the CAD and that's how you bring it in and start modeling. I just literally started tracing all these lines, making shapes, let me just do one thing real quick so you know what we're talking about as an example. So this whole chunk of wall is on the same plane, right? So you can just, well, that's actually a different plane. I'm missing a line there. That's okay. Okay, so you get the idea. You just do this and make sure that that's unchecked so that you're not starting a new shape. So this is all part of the same spline, right? Then of course you can take this and just start, hold down shift and copy it up, right? They're all the same size. I'm going a little faster because I expect you to have already gone through the other videos. So this should be old news to you by this point, but just as a demonstration. And then of course you can take just this, let's say, let's say we uh, copy this and then detach it. This isn't necessarily the fastest way to do this, but that's okay. You'll get the idea. So we can take this and let's put it right here back where it was and convert it to an edit poly and then you can start making your windows, right? Select this face and inset it, extrude it, right? And then instance it around, hold down shift and snap to the next one. We got some weird snaps going on here. Snap, make sure it's on instance. And then when you change that window, it will change both. So that's how this whole thing is built piece by piece and using nice CAD, nice clean CAD from an architect that I cleaned up in AutoCAD and erased all the things I didn't need and then just imported it. Quickly, let me show you that. That's of course up here in the file menu, import. Okay, so let's bring in this one of these, the second floor plan. Show you the settings here. I just use default. This is what my settings look like. Hit OK. Here it comes. Let's take a little second. Let's go to top view, and there it is. Now the important thing is just to place it all correctly. So make sure you snap it to the to the other floor plans. Make sure everything's in the right place might be a good idea to send it to zero zero before you start then you won't have that problem that i was showing you before 
right? Now you know everything's placed properly. So if I were to start from scratch again, I'd put everything over here, make it a little easier on me. But uh, that's how you do it. That's how you bring in CAD. Um, if you want to download this model, just go ahead and follow the links um, in the resources. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, then uh, follow the links in the description below. And uh, thanks for watching.